Anybody have questions for anyone from what's going on here today? No, not in this specific example that you give now. Um, there are some other REST API um, strange things like how and uh, how Transmart is loading the categorical variables. That um, you basically have a folder which has the categorical values under there, which are separate concepts. So you you need to merge that again into normal categor categorical column something. So I don't really think it's uh, it's an issue with the API scheme or the API from a way. Is, but I think it's the way that the data is represented on the data form on Transmart. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I see Piotr already uh, stepping up, but uh, I think this is something that for 17 and 1 might very well be changed because we're going to this database schema where you have uh, um, a cross study concepts with, co with concept codes again. So what you well, so, uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, suddenly I had a doubt that um, this hasn't changed since actually 1.1. Yeah. Um, so we did some fixes in the aesthetic or bug <laughs> fixes, but the how it works is you do the analytics, you don't close the page, you hope it goes through, and at the end of it you can export the results and save them locally. But if you miss one of those steps, then you run it again, and hope again, and back and, and like this. And when you have a demo, then you have your demo crumping with temporary data on the on the server that piles up, and then the, cust the, the, the demo guy comes back and says, oh, the demo didn't work. Yeah, the server is full. You did 10,000 times the same demonstration with the same data, the same export, the server is full. So of course, it failed. Well, uh, so I think <laughs> we did develop for a few trade analysis the, the, the functionality that you can put a job in the background <laughs> and that uh, you can uh, at some point check in and uh, analyze oh, jobs, which jobs are ready, and you can get those results back. So actually, this has been implemented a year ago already because this, um, this what I've presented is took quite a while to implement. I started with Transmart. And so this is where I come from, but so far, really, what happens is you need to export the results <coughs> and save them somewhere. Um, that's it. You have no place to really look at it. Well, am I, have I missed something? I wasn't aware of that bug. No. <laughs> yeah. Did you report this bug anywhere, Hakim? Okay. Yeah. Well, please, please do and test. Yeah. 
think you can talk about the referendum if you say analysis. Yeah. Because that's probably more important. Because I think fundamentally, so fundamentally, if you're talking about analysis, it would save back into the database. It's probably, it's probably a substantial amount of work. But if you basically want to save back the results, into the file share and have that appear as if it's a document within the study, that is probably reasonably doable to stack as well as to implement because the functionality is essentially already there. And then it's up to whoever is managing this to manage sure. when you want to do that and why you want to do that. I think, so that might be a, a pretty reasonable discussion for, for the front to move forward. I think the second element where you're talking about the saving of a query, because that's basically what it's doing, it's saving a query, not actually saving the code for it. Right. One of the things that we always have talked about is data, data provenance in terms of being able to, to save a code for it as it currently existed. Again, something that's not been implemented, but obviously something that came up on our, you know, people in our company have to kind of raise again in my response because we don't have, we don't have the concept of a, a data provenance in that way, but the, I, I think the point there is that it saves the query, right? but it does not save the code for it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But, but again, maybe two worthwhile things to, sure. to bring up. So, so Pilar, in the new UI, is it still is it saving the covert ID, but is that still saving the query? That's still the query. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering how the new UI did that, but I assume it's reusing the same mechanism. Uh, I think currently we save uh, the patient set, so if okay. you add the result of the query. Okay, so then you have the exact patients which you which you found before. Yes. So that sounds like a solution. What you need to do is save the data set, like Axel does in the Mongo. Um, that could be a solution. Like make a snapshot of the data set? Yes, but then we can store the problem in this method. Yeah, I think it's something we saw with Janalis before that they, yeah. and Arvados does the same. It makes a snapshot of the data, it makes a snapshot of the code that's run, stores that. Yeah, that would work for yeah. uh, not duplicating the same efforts, but it wouldn't work for provenance, right? Yeah. I, it just sounds to me like there's several different requirements here, right, that, that we'd have to think about which, you know, how to implement each of them and what we can do. But I think, you know, some of this, and I think a lot of the, the discussion and, and the presentations, you know, the things that we hope we'll talk about maybe tomorrow a bit, just because, you know, where, where, where do we want to go with the platform? You know, we've had you know, at these meetings in the past discussions about, you know, trying to, to lay out, you know, kind of what are the most important things to, to really, you know, move toward. And I think we have a lot of, a lot of questions on the table, you know, about what, um, what we're doing. I think, you know, a lot of the things that you guys, you know, hit and showed us, you know, it was, gives us something to think about. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, you know, somebody's got to do it and, and, you know, we have to figure out when, you know, who's paying for it and all those things. And that's, um, you know, it's part of the, the question, you know, the, the open source community and who's, you know, who's contributing things, you know, how much do we do as sponsored, you know, kind of uh, development. I think that's, these are all open questions that, you know, I think the, the foundation, the membership, you know, and, and you, uh, everyone else, you know, has to just kind of work through them. Yeah. Uh, Axel, I was wondering, uh, why do you think uh, increased analytics as a plugin inside Transport app, as opposed, let's say, to a uh, microservice or standalone <coughs> application which talks to uh, transfer post API. Because basically, most of your architecture is really detached. Uh, you have uh, distributed computing, uh, but also this stuff is basically outside the transfer. And uh, well, so, so why, why put it as a plugin? Um, I didn't trust the REST API. So, as I said, this started. Uh, more, the transport plugin started more than a year ago, and at that point, I wanted to go as fast as possible. So my thought was, I will go directly to the source, extract the data directly from Transmart, not go through the API, the REST API, etc., to go as fast as possible, retrieve the data, and send it to my platform. So 
uh, this is a choice I made. Um, however, it can be reconfigured because it's a service that extracts the data. Uh, what I haven't said is actually for the one of the workflows, the data is directly in Mongo. It's not even installed the inference mod, it's just for the sake of speed. I created an ETL to actually inject the clinical data directly in Mongo and to propel the whole thing. So the gel testing I showed in the in Jupyter was actually extracting from Mongo, same Mongo as Transmont was looking in, looking up. So there is a I have implemented a way to look up that kind of data in Mongo, and then the, actually the workflow will directly pull from Mongo whatever is needed, extending Transmont functionality. Um, but yeah, the other it's just a matter of cycle speed. <laughs> Um, to do optimized queries to extract the data as fast as possible. Um, also, one small question. Uh, I didn't quite get what was the role of Open Lava in your stack? It's scheduling between the different clusters. It's managing different queues. You don't see, but actually there are different queues with the same machines in there. Okay. So you could have different clusters, different size, um, for various reasons. Is when I have a small one for testing, and I have a larger one that my users use, and I stay just on the side, limiting in case I submit too many jobs because something got sideways, I don't impact everybody while prototyping and working. So uh, I have uh, a vanilla transfer 16.2, yeah. and I install your uh, plugin. Yeah. And I also have a Hadoop cluster. Can I use my Hadoop cluster uh, with your setup, or do I have to have your cluster? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, so. so uh, this is one of the packages you support this part, right? You guys spent all technical on us. Yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> discuss okay. Hadoop clusters yeah. there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need to have GPU cluster? Because no, no. Uh, so originally I had Spark. I had one thing, Spark. No R, no Python. Uh, well, Python yeah. uh, no R, no GPU, no nothing. The GPU came during the summer when someone said, I need something like this, can you do it? And I was like, no, I can't now, but I can make this happen. So actually, I just implemented the solution, and that's it. I mean, you want MATLAB, I can put MATLAB. You want, as I said, Rook, whatever you want, I can this. So why Open Lava is because it's uh, <coughs> scheduling a good scheduling system, open source, and it's fairly close from LSD. Okay. The bar opens at 6.30. It would be a great place to continue this part of the discussion. Anybody else have anything? Other? Okay, yeah, maybe. I also said to ourselves that the, the use of it, the targeting of the centers, it's really more the data scientist, right? Someone that, that's quite knowledgeable yeah. about it. So, the, the word data scientist makes me smile because the uh, uh, Department of Physics is a potential user as well. Um, because all this, they have the same problem that they have in biology. Data being data, no matter the analytics, this is agnostic. <coughs> yeah, but uh, you're not expecting a medical doctor to say, figure out which So this is why you have transfer, a transfer plugin. This is exactly why you have a transfer plugin. So the idea, and my original idea, was to have smart R and EA is in one and the same place. To have a smart R as a visualization tool and EA as a propelling <coughs> second engine. History being history, things didn't happen before. The hive is okay. willing to be uh, one of your best. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd love to, uh, it's just hard. I need to find some clients. <laughs> you want one? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe there will be a general idea that uh, whenever we present something, that we actually present the perception of what the presenter thinks is this is the target group for which it was, mm. this would be most interesting. Mm. Mm. And so that actually that we kind of map mm. the different types of users. Mm. Uh, so, we, so yeah, yeah. No, but in case is, is exactly right. I'm yeah. targeting more power users. Uh, it would like me to be frustrated of mm. just I can select what sure. I want and I want to tweak this, tweak mm. that. However, um, if you implement for a, a generic workflow, why not put it in transform? Mm. So it's, it's perfectly feasible. Doesn't mean you have to just despite the medical factors. Actually, EK is adamant. If I develop a new workflow, it needs to be transmart, and everyone should be able to use it. Not just me and coding and and, and the cake troll doing that all day and all night.
Okay, well, thanks everybody for sticking through with us. Um, right now we've got, the, we have a members only meeting, it's gonna start now in the auditorium right, right away. Um, so if those of you who are on member companies and you know, please head into there. Um, the faculty club is where the dinner is tonight. It's uh, starting at 6.30, the bar opens, and dinner is at you know, 7 or something. It's a nice dinner, I like, encourage you to come. Uh, it's about a 10 minute walk on campus. I'm gonna tell me 10 minute walk at UCSD, it's probably a little bit longer maybe. <laughs> There's maps out here if you, have, if you don't have a map. Um, they do have a, I understand, I mean, we had to schedule all these right there. There's a cash bar open there right now, so if you want something more than the beer and wine that we have, you can just go there and have it right now. Um, otherwise, you know, we'll see you there and we'll be there. You shouldn't make it too tempting to skip the menu. The members only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.